Thank you very much for the introduction. Uh, hello, everyone. Today I'm going to talk about the metabolomic study of uh, low dose radiation in the human skin tissue. Uh, I'm working in the UC Southwestern right now, but uh, this work uh, was actually done in the Pacific Northwest National Lab. So as some of you may already know that radiation is kind of uh, um, energetic particle or energy that can travel uh, through the different uh, medium or space. And uh, there are two types of ionized uh, radiation. So one of them is ionized radiation, and the other one is not ionized radiation. So we, um, for our study, we're going to focus on the ionized radiation. It's just because of, uh, um, this ion uh, radiation carries higher energy and will, um, will break the chemical bond and will cause the DNA mutation, will kill the cell directly, and will may also increase the risk of cancer. And uh, um, the source of the radiation is mainly from uh, uh, unstable atoms, such as the cesium-137, or from uh, X-ray um, uh, machines. So actually, everybody exposed to radiation every day, actually. So um, you, may, uh, a, um, you, may to, uh, you may be exposed to uh, radiation from uh, radon gas. You may uh, um, uh, get radiated by the sunshine. You may even uh, get radiated when you talk to someone, so you know, from a human body. And also, of course, if you fly from uh, west coast to east coast, and if you watch TV, you are exposed to radiation as well. But no worry, the background radiation exposure is very, very low, so only 0 0.3 uh, centigrade per year. However, in some scenario, you may have a higher exposure. So for example, um, the nuclear incident uh, caused by the natural disaster, you know, what happened in, in Japan in 2011, and I think it's still affecting the environment right now. Um, and uh, there are some potential terrorism attack. And uh, in, in more uh, common scenario, that could be medical examination. For example, so, uh, X-ray um, radiation, the dose is three centigrade, and for a CT, it's like 10 centigrade. And uh, of course, for the radiotherapy, uh, um, the dose is much higher. It's two centigrade, which is uh, 20 fold of, uh, of two, uh, 10 centigrade. So this number is very important because uh, in my study, I'm going to focus on this. Uh, we're going to use th these three different dosage. Um, and the three and the 10 centigrade are considered to be low dose, while the, um, the two centigrade, which is the 200 uh, centigrade, is, is served as a positive control here. So it's well accepted, well known that um, radiation may cause cancer. And uh, um, the majority of the data is actually obtained from the A-bomb survivor. And we know that the dose and uh, cancer risk is actually pretty linear when it comes to the high dose. But we have no idea whether that's the case for low dose, because nobody knows that and no study have done before. And uh, so low dose design here is a, a 10 centigrade, as I mentioned before. So we don't know whether it's linear or it's nonlinear, or sometimes it even give you some beneficial effect. So that's why you know Department of Energy launched a program called the Low Dose Radiation Program, and uh, the objective is to understand the biology uh, responses um, induced by the ionizing radiation um, at the dose of a 10 centigrade and lower. So we ho they hope that uh, this kind of study can provide a scientific base for the future radiation um, uh, protection standard. And there are various studies are ongoing now, uh, although they cut the money by 50%, a lot of people lost the job just, just because of this. Um, there are several uh, institutions uh, involved, including some of the national lab and some of the uh, universities. So uh, PNL, Pacific Northwest, one of them. So in PNL, uh, pretty much we're doing kind of a system biology, so including genomics, uh, transcriptomics, proteomics, and some metabolomic studies. And for a metabolomic study, we'd like to identify the sig uh, significant change in metabolite, and we hope that uh, we can discover some perturbed uh, um, metabolic pathway that could uh, help us to understand the biological effect of the low-dose radiation. And, uh, um, this is a very typical um, metabolomic study, and uh, the design is very uh, straightforward. And we have um, a 3D human skin tissue as the, our sample. And uh, we use a pretty um, low-end GCMS, and uh, it's a shame that we didn't use it, a GC top from Lico. <laughs> yeah, I know we, uh, uh, we uh, do the peak fighting and the integration by using the metabolite detector, which is a software, it's a free software, which is available online. 
and we normalize by uh, normalize the data by uh, um, uh, compare against the t uh, total peak area, and uh, we did a multivari multivariate data analysis um, by using same class software to do the PC and PRSD very traditional uh, method, and we did a t-test as well, and then uh, the li uh, the metabolite identification was performed by searching against the uh, um, Agilent library, and by searching both the spectrum and the retention index. And for the password analysis, we use uh, uh, CAG. We search uh, against the CAG, and then we do the uh, ingenuity password analysis software to help us to understand the password that is involved. So this is uh, um, this. You may be curious that uh, why I use uh, human skin. One of the reasons is that uh, skin is the biggest organ, and uh, it's the first one to be imposed to um, the first organ to be imposed to the uh, radiation. Um, so, um, and also this is a, uh, this is a human skin, and uh, there's no, you know, um, interspecies differences. So that's why we pick up this model. And this model actually not for myself, it's from a commercial available uh, it's, uh, uh, um, co company so called uh, Mat uh, Mattech here. And uh, this model is uh, widely used in the big pharmaceutical companies for the drug delivery uh, experiment. And, uh, uh, this pretty much like uh, a real skin tissue. It's actually from donor, and uh, it's cultured in device like this. The medium is uh, uh, is put under uh, um, permeable membrane here, right here, and uh, the tissue is cultured uh, above the membrane, and uh, the tissue will just absorb the uh, the medium, the nutrient from from the medium underneath, and then, but the top surface is still uh, exposed to, uh, to to air, which mimics the real uh, physiological condition of the uh, real. Uh, uh, real skin. And then we exposed these uh, uh, samples to um, different doses of the radiations, like three, um, with the sham group as well, 3, 10, uh, and 200 centigrade uh, X-ray. And after, after that, we will uh, just transfer back to the incubator to incubate for uh, additional 3, 24, and 40 hours before the um, tissue harvest. And the sample prep is pretty, um, pretty easy, uh, just homogenized by using dance homogenizer and extracted by using methanol chloroform mixture. And the upper layer will be used for, um, for the GTMS based on metabolomic study. And the lower layer contains lipids will, uh, will kept for the future uh, lipidomic analysis. So today we're going to talk about the metabolomic data only. So this is the GC chromatogram. Uh, we can detect about um, only 100 metabolites from this kind of study, because this is a single quadruple GCMS. When we look at the data, we found that um, um, we didn't see a very clear separation between, uh, at the time, time point of uh, three and the 24 hours. But when it comes to the 40 hours, we see a pretty good separation from sham and uh, um, uh, positive control 200 centigrade here with the red color. Actually, uh, the separation is already pretty good in, uh, when compared to sham and, and uh, 10 centigrade which is uh, in a pink color over here. And uh, this is a 2D PCA, unsupervised, and when it comes to the 3D, we see a very good separation, actually, the well clustered and uh, well separated from uh, different groups. Uh, this is, uh, this is uh, for uh, 40 hours. And uh, then we um, did a supervised PRSDA on, on all the data, and we found a, a time-dependent and dose-dependent separation. So for example, here, at four, at a three uh, uh, hours, we didn't see a very good separation for um, uh, three centigrade. But when it comes to the, uh, but when it comes to the uh, uh, forty hours, the separation is very good already. And also for our at three uh, hours, uh, we didn't see good separation here, but we see a very good separation, uh, not very good, but pretty good separation at uh, two hundred centigrade. So this tells us that the, the, the response of the radiation is, like, is actually kind of uh, time dependent and dose dependent. So we checked uh, the metabolites that are significantly changed and we found that um, at a, a time point of three hours and 24 hours, we didn't see a, a significant change in metabolite at a, a lower dose of three and 10 centigrade. But it was come to the four, 40 hours, there are quite some metabolites already changed uh, even at the uh, low dose of 3 centigrade. And this, this, the metabolite actually was, uh, was compared by uh, using um, the well constant and uh, corrected by the bond-friendly correction. So because we didn't see any um, you know, change in metabolite here uh, uh, for low dose and uh, for objective, this study is actually focused on the low dose. So I'm going to focus on the data from generated from the 40 hours only. 
So this is a significant change in metabolite at 40 hours, and basically we can see that uh, there are 10 metabolites shared by all these three uh, different dosages, uh, including the uh, 3 centigrade. And there are two more metabolites uh, uh, from a 10 centigrade and a three more from a 200 centigrade when compared to the 3 centigrade. I then try to map this metabol uh, map metabolite and I try to understand what uh, possibly it could be, uh, could be um, affected. And then uh, the metabolite shown here in the red color means the upregulated, and uh, for this one's in the green color means the downregulated. And we found that the pyruvate and, and uh, the pyruvate, which is the, uh, which is the uh, K metabolite from uh, glycolysis and the TC cycle, in the uh, TC cycle, um, the downregulated, and um, the, the lipid also downregulated. So that may indicate that uh, the metabolite, actually the, uh, the cell needs more energy to cope with uh, uh, the stress from the radiation. So that's why the, the synthesis of the fatty acid is also decreased. And also it's interesting that uh, although pyruvic acid and panasonic acid is decreased, urethral is actually increased. And this one is uh, actually relevant to pyridine uh, metabolism. And uh, in addition, uh, some other metabolites actually from a purine uh, metabolism, um, they are um, perturbed as well. Uh, for example, uh, xanthin or hypoxanthin, they are increased, and AMP and inosin are actually decreased. So we, uh, we can see that uh, actually um, even at the 10, uh, 10, or, uh, 10 or 3 centigrade, um, they are um, a significant perturbation from, uh, uh, from the uh, metabolic pathway already, including the uh, the energy metabolism and the uh, DNA damage and repair. So since this is the first one, this is the first study uh, for low dose radiation. So we didn't get any data to uh, to compare with and then, but we tried to uh, ask whether that will be correlated with uh, or consistent with the uh, high dose radiation uh, experiment. And then we, there are a few um, uh, previous reported uh, studies showing that uh, in the cell lines, um, the almost the similar pathways are, are affected. So, but the dose here are used are very, very high, actually. This is a 500 centigrade. And there are a few uh, experiments performed in the, in the uh, whole body study in the, in the rodent, the mouse or rat, and then uh, they, they got a urine sample. They found that uh, uh, the DNA, um, um, DNA uh, repair related metabolite and the TC cycle intermediate also uh, changed. So with that, I hope that I have conven uh, convinced you that uh, uh, you know, by using the GTMS-based met metabolomic study, uh, we found uh, um, a dose and time-dependent metabolic perturbations. And uh, we found that uh, the pathways uh, are, that are changed and associated with the uh, low-dose radiation are mainly uh, from DNA damage repair and energy metabolism. And this could be biomarkers and uh, help us to understand the biological effect uh, induced by the low-dose radiation. Of course, this study still cannot answer the question whether this will increase the cancer uh, risk, but I think uh, it's worthwhile for us to combine this data uh, with the other omics studies and the other mechanism studies to find it out. So with that, I'd like to thank my, uh, my uh, this is my previous lab in the Pacific Northwest, and uh, uh, Joe and Marianne uh, helped me to uh, do the uh, radiation because they, they are licensed, but I, I'm not. Um, and uh, Bill Morgan is, actually, uh, is the manager of uh, uh, Lotus Re Radiation Program in the PNL. And uh, um, uh, as I said, the, the money was cut, the budget was cut by 50%. A lot of people have to you know, find out other money to support themselves. And uh, Dr. Smith was my mentor for the postdoc. And I also would like to thank Ralph and Sean for the support from uh, my current uh, institution, uh, UT Southwestern Medical Center. Thank you very much, and I'd like to take questions. Uh, uptake. Yeah. I didn't do this kind of experiment. So when you talk about the uptake, what does that mean? We, we didn't know that, actually. Yeah. Yes, right. This, yeah, I actually don't know how to, uh, how to explain that, actually. This is the one.
Yeah. So I think probably um, it's worth what. Right. So those are increased. So it's weird that uh, three phosphate grass rate is increased, but pyruvic acid is decreased. So, yeah. Glucose, no. Glucose is not, uh, it's not fun to be uh, regulated, either up or down regulated. So uh, that's why I put, uh, you know, the Right. Right. So I think probably that we should do uh, metabolic flux analysis to check, you know, whether and there are some uh, differences here, and also it's worthwhile to check out the enzyme expression levels here from uh, uh, three phos uh, phosphate growth rate to the uh, pyruvic acid here. So what do you think? Uh, this is the low dose, right? This is the low yeah. Actually, the result shows here it they're the same. Actually, let me see. Oh, I did just delete that that one. The same trend. Oh, this is the one. Yeah, this is the one. So they're the same. Yeah. So the 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 regulate uh, the regulation chain for all of this metabolite are actually the same when it comes to uh, f come from uh, 3 to 10 and to 200. Yeah. So it's neither uh, 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 the radiation therapy, right? That's usually use uh, 2 grit. 2 grit. Sometimes use 4, up to 4 or 5 sometimes. But uh, it's commonly used. Those are the two. Yeah, again, this is the in vitro. This is actually in vitro culture tissue. It's not an in vivo model yet, so we have no idea about this. Nobody have done that before. <laughs>